All right, so that was the first one. Area of these uh, two figures combined together within this rectangle. Let's have a go at the next one. Now, if you've uh, been paying attention to the previous problem, you already know what piece of mass is going to be involved here. But in case you're watching this one for the first time, you're like, ah, like what, what's going on here? What's, what's this problem to do with, right? I want you to pause and have a think. Uh, if you know that uh, you've got a rectangle here, um, A, B, C, D, and you've got some point in the middle that has been chosen such that the lengths from the corners are seven, five, and eight respectively, what is the length to this final corner here? Um, how can we work out what uh, the value of CP is? Well, if you've paused the video and had to go yourself, I'm about to spoil it, so get ready for yourself. To solve this problem, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a series of right angled triangles that are going to allow me to relate the seven and the five and the eight, number one, with each other, and number two, with the unknown length that I'm after, okay? So uh, maybe for starters, I'll call that unknown length X. And um, then I'll also notice that if I draw a bunch of lines that are perpendicular and parallel to the sides, that go through P, um, that's gonna be very useful for me because it creates all those right angle triangles that I was after, right? So for example, if I draw a length like so, and then I'm also going to draw one across, oh, I think I missed, but that's okay, we can fix it up. There we go. Okay, what I have created is a series of right angled triangles that I can relate to each other using, um, say for example, if I, if I put some names on these. So if I say, okay, let's call this, uh, I've, I've already got capital A's for the, the vertices, for the, the corners. So I'll call this little a here. It's gonna go across from here to here. I'll call this little b from here to here. And uh, then I need some vertical length. So let's call uh, this one here. C, and then I'll call this one here D. Now A, B, C, and D, they all appear in lots of different places. So um, you can see I'm gonna get some relationships here if I can identify where the appropriate right angle triangles are. So let's actually uh, see if we can draw some of these in. So I'm gonna use, let's go with this color, shall we? Let's draw a triangle in there. And let me make that a little easier for you to see. So I'll make that smaller. I'll make this filled. There we go. I can make that just a little bit better. I think I'll need to zoom in though. Let's try that. Get that right in that corner. And same for this one. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. All right, so having a look at this first right angled triangle here, you can see I've got an unknown here, A, and an unknown here, C, but the hypotenuse is seven, right? So I can say off of that, A squared plus C squared equals seven squared. Okay, so far so good. Now, if you have a look over to the other side, uh, this, this purple triangle is not the only one that C appears in, right? So if I just copy this across and let's move this, over here, I will just choose a different color so it's a bit easier for you to distinguish. <laughs> Not the outside, but the actual filling. There we go, that's a bit better. So you can see here, um, I don't have A squared and C squared, I've got B squared and C squared. So if I combine those two together, B squared plus C squared equals five squared. Now, I've got one last length to actually use. It's that eight that hasn't actually been um, used up yet. So if I copy this down to here, what have I got here? So again, let's choose another color for that. That'll do for the outside. There we go. Okay, so you can see here, I have D as my vertical length there, and I also have by virtue of the opposite sides being equal to each other. I've got an A down here as well. So that gives me A squared plus D squared is equal to eight squared. Okay, so I've got three equations here that use the seven, five, and the eight. And then lastly, I've got this sort of um, unknown triangle here. I don't know anything here, right? Um, at least no values. So I've got the B, which you saw just like with the A, it's, it's opposite to um, this length up here. So I've got, if I, just for good measure, since I did it for all the other ones, might as well do it for this one too. 
Let's move this across this way. I wonder how it will look if I just do that. No, let's do the outside as well, because I'm picky like that. All right, uh, yeah, I'm satisfied. Now, if you have a look at this blue triangle, um, I again have the shorter sides in terms of B's and D's, and then the hypotenuse is the part that I want, right? So I can say B squared plus D squared equals X squared. All right, so you can see here, if I, if I just highlight this, right, and I used this color over here, this is, the, uh, this is the equation which I'm going to kind of focus on, right? Because it has the x in it that I'm after, but what it, it has that I don't want is, is this b and this d, because I don't know what they are, right? However, I do notice b and d appear in these other equations. So if I were to name these, right? Let's call these equations one, two, and three. You can see that the b squared and the d squared that I want, they appear in equations two and three, but to invoke equations two and three, you then sort of include this, these problems, right? You've got c squared and a squared, which you don't want, but you're probably seeing where this is going, right? I can use equation one, which has just a squared and c squared in it to get rid of the a squared and c squared that I don't want from equations two and three. So I guess the way that I would write this is I would say, uh, taking all of these, right? I would say if you add equations two and three, you will get the uh, b squared and d squared that you want, but you'll get the a squared and c squared that you don't want, so therefore I'm going to subtract the first equation, which will em eliminate those out. And then of course, whatever's happening on the right hand side, we can then deal with that. So what am I going to get? Well, as we mentioned, you'll get the b squared and the d squared. The a squared and the c squared will be removed. I mean, if you want in your working, you can add and subtract them, but I think we've just made the argument pretty clear. And what do you get on the right hand side? Well, we get equation two gives us five squared, equation three gives us eight squared, and then equation one gives us seven squared. So I've subtracted, or rather I've added and subtracted everything on the left, I've added and subtracted everything on the right, but then I can say, if I call this you know, equation four, I can say, but from, or substituting in, might be a better way to say it, I can substitute that b squared plus d squared for x squared. So that's gonna give me x squared on the left hand side. That gives me 25 plus 64, take away 49. And the last time I checked that was equal to 40. So therefore, x is gonna be the square root of 40 because x is a length. So I disregard the negative. So, just like with the previous problem, uh, these right angled triangles find a way of sneaking their way into uh, all kinds of geometry problems. What I like about this one is that uh, even though there are so many unknowns, like I never found out what A, B, C, and D were, but I didn't need to because these relationships here from the right angle triangles, I could use to sort of cancel things out. And uh, again, not only did the question not tell you that, hey, there's no right angle triangles here, you're not necessarily uh, see that Pythagoras is relevant from, the, from out the gate, you also weren't told that you'd need to create a system of simultaneous equations that you would have to solve. But it just emerges from the problem. So this is often the way, right? In, in real world problems, you don't get told, there isn't some heading at the top saying Pythagoras' theorem or simultaneous equations, and then that clues you into the kind of maths that you need. You have to look at the problem, start to uh, do this uh, process of turning the language or the diagram into mathematical symbols. And then as you look at the symbols and see how they relate to each other, you start to see, oh, this is the maths I'm going to need. I'm, need to, I'm going to need to use algebra. I'm going to need to use simultaneous equations and whatever else is, needs to be relevant.